Last night, great game at St James's Park. It finished Newcastle United 2, Manchester City 3. What a comeback from Manchester City. Perry, did Kevin De Bruyne cement his status as the league's best player with a 21-minute substitute appearance? You know what, if you're like a team like Newcastle, obviously trying to hang on to a lead, which they were, and they were, they were defending really well up until that point. With their, That's their first choice back front at Trippier, Cher, Botman and Dan Burn. Burn. Yeah, so they got their first. And then you're looking over and you think, oh no. Please not him. That's the last thing you want when you're just trying to, like, legs are getting a bit heavy and then the game's just getting a bit elongated. And he looks, Kevin De Bruyne, he looks like, even though he's just been off for a long layoff, when he comes back and we've been lucky enough to see him play live, the Premier League is very um, athletic. It's all action, isn't it? It's like end to end stuff. It's very intense. He looks like he's playing in a testimonial game. You know, when you see those players, the game just slows down that sort of half a second where he's got that much time and that much like He's vision. on 33 and a third, everyone else is on 45. Exactly, yeah. And you just watch him and you think you've, you're making it look so easy. And the goal, the goal that he scored was an unbelievable goal where they said obviously that you use the centre half which was Cher. You use him as your screen and try and bend it. He did, he actually, I, I kept playing it over and over again. He nutmegged him. He actually nutmegged Deliberately him. So. Deliberately so. It's sort of a long barrier and I'm sure I wish he could turn back time but so he's <laughs> like he's actually and you think you know when you look at things you think Has I, have I seen him do that as he actually nutmegged him as he's shooting obviously to put it low down to Dubravka's right hand side and you think oh my god he's actually had that vision to actually execute that technique which is unbelievable it was a brilliant finish from Kevin De Bruyne and don't think that share one passed me by I know you can I'll just keep testing you. Yeah, yeah, it's always there. Uh, but Eddie Howe, eight defeats in ten games. I don't think there's much dissension from the stands, from the Gallagher end or around the support at Newcastle United, but I wonder how what conversations being had in the Newcastle boardroom. At the yeah, well, do you know what? There's no dissension amongst the fans. There's no dissension amongst the players, you know, because they could tell they're completely invested into Eddie Howe and Jason Tinder, what they're trying to do. They look, Newcastle looked yesterday like they'd got their energy back because I saw them at Luton they look like they're running on quicksand because they thrive on the premium midfield didn't they like again very physical mm. athletic mm. they look like they got that back but from Eddie Howe's point of view he's going to be a victim of his own success because if you flipped the seasons and if he if Newcastle were where they are last season and sort of mid-table trying to get into that European places mm -hmm. after he saved them the season four you go okay there's steady progression there I can get that and then he had the season, this season, he had last season, where they get to you, you go, yeah. wow, we're on the upward trajectory. Because he's had that instant success, he's put himself under pressure. And I think, I personally think, if Newcastle don't get in a European place, I think that his, his job will go at the end of the season, not before the end of the season. I think the owners will feel like they need to do something to get them, you know, kicking onto that different level where and, they think they should be. And financially, they can't do a great deal. In this transfer window, for example, we, we've heard about the restrictions and the, the idea and the notion that a big player currently in the Newcastle squad is going to have to be sold in order for, you know, deals to be done elsewhere yep. to bring players in. But yeah, it's going to be as well. And they've got a few assets, let's face it. Yeah, but you'd hope that Eddie Howe would have the choice of the player, obviously that he doesn't want to go, but um, who's going to have least effect on the performance of his team. And probably I can't to get think who that player a couple, would be if a couple we of players in. If well, we were he, trying to pick one. Well, they mentioned well, before it was Alan Sam Maximan, wasn't it? Mm. So he thought, okay, we're going to get decent money for him because he didn't really fit the way that Eddie Howe wanted his team to play. But the players you're talking about now, you're talking about Gumares, who would fetch a lot of money. You're talking about Isak would fetch money. The one I think maybe would be Callum Wilson because of his uh, injury record. That's the that's the only one. Because all the all these this is Eddie Howe's team now, isn't it? It's not mm. as if there's many players that are floating around and you think, actually, no, yeah, he can be discarded because I don't want him. So he's in a, a difficult position. But I always think as well, this SF, FFP, which they've got to adhere to, that's now, it was done to stop uh, clubs from going out of business. You know, owners spending money that didn't have. Like, for instance, when Peter Rizdale was spending all Leeds United's money because they might get in the Champions League. And Portsmouth, Portsmouth yeah. is actually, actually going to the wall, basically, yeah. with three owners going in there. But what it's done as well, it stopped teams breaking into that cartel at the top of the league. I'm always the opinion: if you have the money and you you know you've got, we know you've got, and you prove, go and spend it. It's probably the only businesses ever 
where you're told what you can't spend on your own business. Because football clubs are a business now. Got Leicester fans screaming at the radio now, we managed it, why can't they? Now, Leicester was unbelievable, but that is a freak. Let's be honest, that is a freak season. And it's a brilliant season, and it just shows you that football is a meritocracy and you can get these anomalies every now and again. But on a you know on, on a long term and um, on a regular basis, that's that's not going to happen. And we should fear City greatly uh, in terms of those around them at the top of the table, because much like Sir Alex Ferguson's Manchester United, as soon as you've got a new calendar on the wall, it seems that Manchester City, like United, used to find levels of performance that they may not quite have had that consistently in the first half of the season. Yeah, Relentless. I think. Yeah, they they are, but um, I think there is. Um, when teams are playing, as Newcastle proved yesterday, and I've seen Man City a, a lot this season, is there is that little bit of vulnerability there where they're conceding more goals than what they were conceding before. But if you look at, I just looked at their stats, and when Man City have taken the lead under Pep Guardiola, they've only lost once in 72 Premier League games. It's astonishing. So and that is, there's that Rodri record as well, isn't there? With, with, with the, they've never lost when he's played. Yeah, well, they lost all the games when he didn't play, didn't yeah. they? When he was obviously he was injured, so. Um, I mean, you look at that as a stat and go, that's just an anomaly. So he suspended, wasn't he? When yeah, he was there's suspended. got to be something in that. Absolutely got to be something in that. If you've got anything you want to say about yesterday's Premier League action or indeed the EFL action, we're happy to take your calls on that. Me and Perry, our number, as always, for TalkSport is 03717 You know, if you have things interest in that game, when he wanted to change it, Pep Guardiola put Oscar Bob on in front of Jack Grealish. Mm. Wasn't it? So go on, young man. You go and prove. And and didn't he prove and, it? And to be fair, again, that's Ivan Edel's stuff from Kevin De Bruyne, where sometimes you can say that fullback Kieran Trippier could he do better, but he actually thinks, no, I've, I've got you. And the precision of the pass and the weight of the pass, but Oscar Bob's touch, which takes it across oh, him, he's still got a lot and, to do. And from then that he point. then he plays a one-two with himself, didn't he? It's like yeah. quick feet. So Did, it just, do you know what it reminded me of? In that penalty area, at St James's Park, it reminded me of the sort of thing Peter Beardsley used to do. That little twinkle. He played a one-two of himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. 